we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, I want to thank everybody for joining us today. Uh, my name is Hillary Jones. I'm a multimedia technician here at Columbus State Community College Library. And today we have Kaylee Turbo with us, and they are a part of CSCC Library's Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Speaker Series. And this is supported by the State Library of Ohio with federal funds from the Institute of Museum and Library Services. And Kaylee Trevo is a designer and illustrator based in Peoria, Illinois. They received their BFA in illustration from CCAD in 2016 and have since been working as an in-house designer and freelance illustrator for a variety of companies and clients. Some of those highlights include Cartoon Network, Planned Parenthood, Hacienda Beer Company, and they're currently a senior designer at Her Campus Media. Um, so today they're going to be showing us their illustration process through a live drawing session, and we'll also be taking some questions afterwards. Uh, so yeah, Kaylee, take it away. Hi. Um, yeah, hello. Uh, my name is Kaylee Turbo. Uh, from Peoria, Illinois. I grew up around here. I moved to Columbus, Ohio, where I went to CCAD, got my BFA in illustration. Uh, yeah, and it's really exciting to be here, Columbus. And I mean, CCAD is right next to Columbus State. So I have like a lot of affection in my heart for the city and just like the school in general. So I'm really grateful to be here. Uh, I have my camera set up. Um, so I have my little sketch that I've been working on. Um, <clears throat> I these days mainly work professionally on my computer, like as, as a senior designer at her campus, uh, we use mainly like Illustrator and Photoshop for day-to-day -day design. So I really, in my personal work, have been really relishing in, in the physical process. Like I'm a huge fan of having a sketchbook. That's something that's been super consistent um, in my life since I was a teenager. Uh, so that's kind of the main takeaway uh, <laughs> of this little thing is I would really recommend uh, getting into your sketchbook process. And I think you can really find who you are in your artistic voice and your identity through uh, a sketchbook practice. Um, so uh, for the process wise, um, what I normally do is I have like a bunch of, I have like two sketchbooks usually going on. I have my like crappy sketchbook where I do mainly really rough sketches. So here you can kind of see like, I was trying to just come up with a composition um, for this little self-portrait doodle. Um, so these are called thumbnails usually. Uh, so these are just like little tiny sketches. I'm just trying to figure out the main composition. Um, from there, you can kind of see the faint outline of like my main base sketch. Uh, and I've been a lot more loose um, with my sketchbook these days. Like I try to just go in and do the shapes that feel intuitive and don't plan too much ahead and just try to have fun with it. Uh, so this is what I have going on right now. Um, I'm a big fan of like Posca markers. So they're like paint markers that I think these are acrylic based. Um, so they are permanent um they lay on really opaque uh, which I really like um so I usually don't have to do a bunch of layers um my biggest weakness <laughs> in drawing is uh drawing too hard so and that's something I've been told since I was like a kid um is that I tend to just leave a really heavy mark uh so it's likely I'll have to do a few layers just completely hide the uh sketch underneath this but like I said, for me and my work, like this is just a little something for myself and my sketchbook. So I just don't, I don't sweat it. Um, so yeah, this is what I've been working on. Uh, I have the main sketch as you can see. And then the next phase from there is doing, I kind of call it like a color map. So right now you can see like, oh, I have this pink outline. So that's gonna be this darker pink. Um, so I kind of go from like, big shapes to little shapes. So I've kind of all the big shapes of the figure uh, blocked out. So now I'm going to go in and figure out the littler shapes. So I think the glasses, I want to be blue. So I'm going to get up kind of close in here. And I'll probably save the pupils for the end. Uh, 
in general, when you're painting, you want to do like, <laughs> I'm going to show my six plus years out of art school, but right now I feel like you, I, I like to do the lighter shapes first and then do the darker shapes after. Um, I'm not mixing any paints here, but the general rule of thumb is like when you're mixing paint, you want to like add dark to light uh, because the dark will just like make everything, it takes a little amount of dark to just completely change a color. So I just kind of like keep that in mind just because even though these are going down pretty opaque, uh, they're, they can still like when they're wet, when the post markers are wet, they can still be like a little weird blending. And so I just try to do my best to avoid that. Um, what I like about Posca's is like, uh, like I said, they do dry pretty quickly. That said, not quickly enough for how impatient I can be sometimes. Um, and how heavy handed I can be sometimes. Uh, so I do have to like be a little patient with, with this process. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna like start filling in some of the bigger shapes now. Yeah, I've always really liked having a sketchbook. Um, I have a couple more I can show as, as we're talking. Um, this was one from like, Last year, I think, mid-quarantine, um, this was a Posca marker, marker sketch. Um, also like to just do ink doodles, graphite, just like random, I, this, this random stuff. I don't share all of this. Like sometimes I just need to draw and I think having a practice that's like just for you can really help keep your creative juices flowing. Um, yeah, I was working on this sketchbook. Uh, last year while I was applying for jobs and like I think some of this stuff I was working on while I was applying for my current role at her campus um and I think what has been so important to me again about like sketchbooking and taking time to like find your creative voice through personal practice is that really can shine through in in your more professional work uh, I'd say a majority of the work that I do as I mentioned is digital so I don't really have a lot of like sketches for uh, the stuff I do at her campus or stuff that I've done at Cartoon Network. Um, but a lot of this color and the shapes really comes through in my professional work. I think uh, the stuff I get commissioned to do, the stuff I do for her campus, the stuff I've done for Cartoon Network all has this really like youthful, playful voice. Um, and that's something that I love doing. It obviously comes through in my personal work. Uh, so I'd always recommend when you're applying for jobs um, to be honest about the kind of work you like doing um, and try to like have that come through in your portfolio and your application. Uh, I For my application to her campus, uh, for instance, I did a little test project for them uh, and I just really wanted it to be like reflective of what I'm bringing to the table because I think something to keep in mind when you're applying for jobs is like so many other creatives and designers will have literally the same exact skill set like we all know Photoshop we all know Illustrator um so something I've learned after after art school and after a few years of my career is like uh always try to showcase your talent and like your perspective and your vision um because that is what's going to make you stand out because there is always going to be someone who's a better designer than you. <laughs> and there's always going to be somebody who has a better portfolio. There's always somebody who's like going to be putting in more hours. Like that's the kind of a uh, struggle of, I think, pursuing a creative career is like everybody's so passionate about what they do. Um, but the more specific you can get about your own passion, I think the more that's gonna be highlighted in uh, the work that you do. So I feel very lucky that like for her campus, that really worked out for me. Um, and I just feel so grateful to be on the design team that I'm working on and the design team at her campus. We all, I think have this approach to our work and we all like have our really specific strengths and we all have, <laughs> yeah, some of my friends from work are in the chat. So thank you everyone. Uh, everybody has their really specific strength and a really unique perspective. And I think that's what makes working on a team really, really successful. Um, is just having like a diverse, both in terms of like background, but also in like creative, creative perspective, like having 
a lot of diversity in the room on a team like that can be really, really beneficial. Um, and I've learned so much since I've joined the team at her campus. And I would say that approach also really um, helped me like jumpstart my career. Uh, so I studied illustration at the Columbus College of Art and Design. And while I was there, I was really strategic. I'd say uh, I always had a passion for animation and illustration uh, to the point where like I initially went to school wanting to like be a concept artist for, for animation, but I was always very aware of like, that is a notoriously difficult industry to break into. And you, in a lot of ways, I, I no longer dream of that. It's something that would be cool if it happened to work out. But to me, what seemed a lot more practical and a lot more, uh, I don't want to say feasible because it was still really hard, but like uh, there was, there's a lot more opportunity for like general graphic design um, and apparel design, especially in Columbus. So I started my career um, doing children's apparel at a small business in Columbus. And again, what really served me in getting that first job right out of college was, um, I would say the uniqueness of my portfolio. Uh, again, like I was graduating with a bunch of really talented people and I don't, I'm sure not everybody was applying exactly for the jobs I was, but um, right out of school, my portfolio was very, as I mentioned, like my work's developed a lot since I've been out of school since 2016. Uh, but the things that have, the through line has been, it's been very fun. It's been very youthful, been very playful. I try to keep like, what's the word? Um, irreverent. I try to bring like irreverence to my work when possible. So I think that stood out when I was initially applying for this kids apparel role. And that made me just a really good fit for that because my work was really playful and fun. And it was at a pretty small company that uh, was also looking for not just like designers to execute designs, but like people who had creative vision and could like put together collections and also run social media. It was like a pretty small business. So I was in my first role, I was doing a lot of that. I was uh, creating t-shirt designs for kids, for kids apparel line, as well as doing social media marketing, creating uh, this various marketing collateral for that business as well. Uh, and it did become pretty overwhelming uh, having that much responsibility for such a small business. We didn't have the highest payer, the greatest benefits um, when you work in a business that small. Um, but what I did get was a lot of practical experience in doing a lot of things DIY. Um, and I also got the opportunity to work with some really talented and amazing um, designers as well. Uh, I worked with um, Larry, we have our mutual friend, Chelsea Bunn, who like I worked, that's how I met my friend Chelsea and she's a really incredible designer and illustrator. I would definitely recommend looking up her work. Um, and I learned so much from working with Chelsea and another designer there, Emily. Uh, I learned so much um, from working with them. A lot of things in my process now, uh, I picked up from working with Chelsea and just that like networking opportunity I'm just so grateful for. Uh, but again, like the stuff I learned from that role, the portfolio that I built and just like the social media experience kind of led me directly to my next full-time job, um, which was social media designer for Boomerang, um, which if the boomers out there recall is like the, the like classic cartoons that would go on on Cartoon Network um, around 2017 they were reformatting it to a streaming service. Um, so they were looking for, to build together a social media team um, for that. So I had some connections there. Um, my friend, uh, Colleen, who I went to school with, um, was a social media designer on the Cartoon Network team. So she like referred me to the role um, for Boomerang and it was kind of a tumult, like that, it was kind of a tumultuous, uh, interview process, like a company like Turner, who at some point Turner became merged with Warner Brothers and became Warner Media. And uh, I was in like the middle of all of that, like boomerang kind of got lost in that shuffle for a bit, but um, yeah. <laughs> so working, working and trying to apply for places that are that big kind of come with these, uh, with so many people, just communication, I think just gets harder. Um, 
but at the end of the day, like it took a few months, but I eventually learned, like I was offered, made it, got an offer um, to do social media content creation for Boomerang. And again, it was just a really good fit for what I liked doing, um, which was like, again, fun, bright, colorful, irreverent, like for kids, but with Boomerang, uh, it has an older audience as well. And creating social media content for that, uh, obviously like older people are a little bit more online than like literal children on social media. So that we were allowed to like, kind of get weird with some of the stuff we were making for Boomerang. Uh, but yeah, that was that was my next full-time role. Um, so I was at Boomerang uh, for about a year and a half, um, 2017 to like end of 2018. Um, initially I was working remote. Um, so I was staying in Columbus. I had a little home office I would call in and then I uh, relocated to Atlanta where the marketing for Cartoon Network and all that is. So I relocated to Atlanta in the middle of 2018 to work in office. And that's kind of when uh, the Warner Media merger really got going and uh, Unfortunately, Boomerang was kind of lost in that shuffle. As I mentioned, uh, Boomerang as a streaming service no longer exists, RIP. Now a lot of that stuff can be found on HBO Max. <laughs> so uh, it's so that, that's kind of how that role ended. From there, I just kind of ended up taking a bunch of different freelance roles. And again, similar to my experience at my first apparel design job, um, I just got a lot of great experience working for Boomerang. I met some really other amazing like talented artists and creators and it was just a really <laughs> beautiful time but really uh difficult at the same time like working really hard and just kind of having this feeling that everything was going to be going away soon um so yeah I transitioned uh from that role as like social media content creator which meant so many things. Like some days I'd be designing graphics. Some days I'd be illustrating graphics, which was always really fun. Some days I'd be shooting video. Some days I'd be editing video. Some days I would just get to like watch cartoons and like cut out the best clips and put those on social. So like, it was a really fun job. And also I got all this experience in like video editing and like GIF making and uh, so much video shooting, which like I actually haven't really done too much since that role, but. Um, yeah, from the, again, it was this other opportunity where like, I, I got all this experience. I was able to put Cartoon Network on my resume, which was like opened a ton of doors for me. That's like just very eye-catching. And for like, uh, as a designer who had about two years of experience, I feel like that just put me in a really good opportunity to like get out and apply for a bunch of stuff. So I was freelancing for a while. Um, I did some kids books. Um, I worked with Disability Rights Ohio to put together two children's books that help educate um, kids on the rights that they have when they're going through the foster system, as well as like giving them the basic understanding of the court system. So that was a, a really fun project I worked on a few years ago. Uh, did another awesome freelance project I worked on. Um, I did two posters for uh, the McElroy brothers, which are my favorite podcasters, um, they do My Brother, My Brother and Me and The Adventure Zone. Um, so I had just sent them an email and then their merch person got back to me and I it just happened to be a fit. And it was, that was like such a dream project, um, getting to like make things for things I was a fan of. Um, so another piece of advice is just like, put yourself out there just like send emails to people. Don't bother them. Don't be rude, but just like send an email. You never know what might happen. So yeah, I was freelancing for a few, well, I was like freelancing, doing like a few in-house gigs for a few weeks. Like, uh, like I felt very much like a gig worker, I suppose, but with like design and like other things, like I was doing freelance illustration. I was like doing, like I was uh, working as an assistant designer for a smaller studio in Atlanta. Just like finding a bunch of different streams of income during that time was like, it was a lot to handle. So I did eventually find another in-house role at um, an agency and 
what was, and I don't know, I love getting feedback from an interview. And another thing I got from this interview was like, um, my art director who had interviewed me said that like, what, what stood out to me was like, uh, you're, you were being yourself in the interview. Um, I had shown some work that, uh, for an agency is like very bright and colorful. And I do have a portfolio of like general graphic design stuff you would expect from an agency. I, but I also have my illustration portfolio and this is all hosted on my website. So when I'm applying to jobs, I'm like sending them to my portfolio website, which has a mixture of illustration and like web banners, that kind of stuff. Um, so the art director that I interviewed for, or the art director I, inter I interviewed with uh, for a design role, um, like specifically like called out that she really liked the bright, colorful, fun work that I was doing. And even though in this specific agency, um, a majority of what I was doing was just like very corporate banner ads, um, I occasionally got to really uh, shine in my illustration work. I made some like in-house stuff for the agency's social media, that kind of thing. So again, I like I got this feedback that was like, yeah, your your work is like good and we know you can do the job, but like what stood out to us is this bright, colorful, fun, irreverent illustration work. Um, so that's always, I don't know, I, I always try to highlight that and when I apply for jobs and why I feel like that's important is uh, not only, I when you're applying for jobs, I think something you should keep in mind is like, not is this is this job a good fit for me you know like i know we've all been and i have been in just desperate sending out job applications left and right willing to take whatever is thrown at me um but i think when you're going through an interview process and when you're applying for stuff being authentic um and keep it in mind excuse me keep it in mind your own values and um, what you're looking for and the work you want to do. And if you can do that work at that company, you're going to be way happier um, taking a job that's a fit for you. Um, and I think long-term your coworkers and your future boss will also appreciate that. <laughs> and I, again, feel very lucky um, to have that at my current role with her campus. It's just been a really good fit for the, the work that I do and the team that I work with. So yeah, uh, how did you get from Atlanta then to back to Illinois? <laughs> uh, abject failure is how I sometimes put it. Um, no, I, I, I mean, I, it was at the, I lost my current, or my, I lost my job during the pandemic. Uh, they cut budgets, marketing got slashed. I was uh, doing, I was in like a temporary, but long-term uh, freelance contract for uh, this dental, <laughs> dent, this dental technology company. Um, and it, this was one of those jobs where I really needed a job. So I just kind of took the thing that came my way and no regrets really, because it paid pretty well, uh, for the stuff I was doing. And, uh, yeah, so I had lost my job at the beginning of the pandemic, like March, 2020, um, which was also my birthday. So that was <laughs> a rough year. Uh, so yeah, and during, during that time, I really hustled and like, I, again, took, tried to take on more freelance and I was living in Atlanta. Um, so I was taking on freelance. I just kept getting really fun jobs that were a really good fit for me. I, that was around when I did, um, the second McElroy poster. Um, the first one I did was for their 2019 tour. And then I did the poster for their first virtual live show they did at the end of 2020. Um, I also had the opportunity to create some uh, Chris, uh, uh, holiday cards for um, Planned Parenthood, which was like a dream project. I had like always wanted to work with Planned Parenthood. And that year, um, somebody I'd done another freelance project with just happened to like get that contract and she knew that my work was a good fit. So I did some cool illustrated uh, holiday cards for Planned Parenthood. Um, I was asked to do uh, this like concept packaging for a underwear delivery service. And again, they just were like, do whatever you want. So like, I just did whatever I wanted. And it was again, very bright, colorful and kind of weird, <laughs> which was really fun. Uh, but yeah, near the end of my lease in Atlanta, um, 
October, 2020, it just became apparent I wasn't getting full-time, I wasn't gonna be getting a full-time work job that required me to be in Atlanta. Um, so I moved back, moved back home with my parents, uh, October, 2020, uh, and they happened to be around the Peoria area still. So I moved back here and very graciously was able to save money on rent as I worked on my portfolio, took on more freelance, just kind of kept my, kept my head down and just kept going. And, um, that was when at the beginning of 2021 is when I applied to her campus and, uh, that is there, uh, um, I'm like the worst at explaining her campus sometimes, but um, if you work in a, uh, I sometimes describe them as like a Gen Z feminist Buzzfeed. It's like a hosting articles uh, and they have different chapters in different college campuses. So if you're a college student, you can sign up for a chapter, a her campus chapter, and you can write for us. So at her campus, I primarily do, uh, digital ad campaigns for different clients that will come to us um, and want to advertise to our audience. So I'll create like Instagram story ads, I'll create banner ads, I'll create immersive experiences with, with, with this tool called Seros, which is just like, I never thought I'd be able to do anything like that. Uh, UI, I'd never studied UI or UX. So the, like being able to do that here has been really, really cool. Um, yeah, so that's got that job. They're based in Boston, but it's a remote company. Um, <clears throat> so I've been working from here in Peoria um, where rent is really cheap. <laughs> uh, I did end up getting my own place after I got the job, which I'm very grateful for because now I have two cats um, that need space and time. Um, <laughs> yeah, so that's kind of how I ended up from like Atlanta back to Peoria. Um, it's been a weird few years here. I've been here a year and a half, I suppose. Um, the arts community is a lot smaller, but I'm like trying to figure out my place in it. Um, yeah, that's that's a story from Columbus to Atlanta to Peoria and wherever's next, <laughs> we'll see. So since you do uh, work remotely, do you have like a set, scheduled type of you know like time of day that you like to create or is it based off of projects that you're working on depending on you know the time frame you need to work on the project or yeah my so for her campus i work uh nine to five eastern time so for me it's eight to four uh so that's usually i start my day and get right to work with her campus stuff um for my own creative uh practice. It usually happens after work. Um, I'm a big runner. So I am currently training for a half marathon. So I spend a lot of time outside. Like I get like insane <laughs> if I'm like inside all the time. So as soon as work's over, I'm like, great. And then I close the laptop, I change and I'm like outside for as long as possible. Um, so usually uh, I will get into my own practice Later in the evening, um, again, big into sketchbooking and like staying away from screens. Um, so that's been my, uh, it's been my practice lately is probably between like eight and 10, like after, after I run, after I eat food, I'm like, great, I'm gonna sit down and watch a show and just hang out with my sketchbook for a while. Hmm. Trying to determine if I should have like the floor be blue or if the background should be blue. I feel like I want to make the floor blue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you mentioned that your uh, style had changed, you know, over time, like, you know, it often does. So could you describe what your style used to be like or your creative process used to be like and then in comparison to how it is now? Yeah. Uh... I, man, it's really fluctuated and I find myself drawing in a couple different styles. Um, I now really enjoy working in like a lineless color block style, um, focusing on like big shapes, um, kind of simple characters and just like trying to stuff as much into the composition as possible. Like I have all these stars, I just want filling the sky and I kind of enjoy this like 
play between maximalism and minimalism. Like I try to have the shapes be simple, but like I want a lot of them. So that's kind of where I'm I'm at these days. Um, I, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, in the past, my work has, as I mentioned, I was originally very interested in studying animation and working in the animation industry. So I now, um, as you can see, I kind of like rigid poses. Um, so that's something I am noticing a lot now in my current work. Um, whereas I think in the past, uh, my style has been a lot more like drawing focused, if that makes sense. Like animation, uh, there's a lot of principles in like having really solid structure with your forms and your characters. And I used to like focus a lot more on that in my drawing. Whereas now um, I just kind of like pushing, pushing shapes, pushing characters, like trying to make things. I don't, I, I don't really care if things are realistic or not. Um, I do try, I think sometimes my drawings, I get, I can get stuck being like, oh, but that like form doesn't look quite right. Um, and then I'll overthink it and just, Right now I'm trying to find a balance between having like good volume and like having like good principles of animation and drawing with having like bright, colorful, like really pushing anatomy shapes. Um, some of my favorite illustrators who work like that. I really love uh, Juhi Yoon um, is one of my favorite illustrators. Um, I, she, she's, I believe she's based in New York and she does like just really wild, fun figures. And it's really like expressive and uh, not focused on anatomy like at all, but you can still like really see the figure. And I, I would like to be able to push my work a little further in that direction. Um, but yeah, I'd say in the past, I have some older sketchbooks here. Let's see. Yeah, it looks like we already have a couple okay. questions in the chat too. Let's see, Cassidy asked, uh, do you recommend going to an institution such as CCAD or what are your thoughts on transferring and completing a degree um, at a non-specialized school such as OSU's arts program uh, or not necessarily specialized, but focused? And that's a hard one um, because I, I mean, I'll be like transparent. I have a lot of student debt and I'm probably gonna be paying that off for a long time. Uh, and so on the one hand that sucks and that limits me in terms of like where I live, like like I mentioned before, Peoria rent's really cheap and I can have a two bedroom apartment here and be able to pay my student loans. And I love that about where I live right now. But on the other hand, like, it would be nice to have the flexibility to travel more, to live in a city that has um, more of the things that I'm used to. Like, so that that's kind of a bummer. Um, so with that said, I don't regret my time at CCAD at all. I think art school was where I needed to be <laughs> to thrive. Um, I really struggled in high school and I think uh, the art school environment worked really well for me. Um, so I, I love my time at CCAD. I don't, I don't regret it, but if I was going to go back and do it again, I think I would have explored other options more. I was so determined to go to an art school. Uh, it was like something I knew since I was like 12, I thought I like needed to do it to have a career. And, uh, I think the things I learned in an art school, you can learn anywhere, which is, um, how to how your craft, um, learning how to network with people. Uh, I, uh, again, like I got the roles I got like at, in, in my career due to the connections I made at CCAD. So I don't think I'd be where I am now if I hadn't had gone there, but I'd probably be in a completely different place and I'd probably still be happy <laughs> if I had gone to like a state school or somewhere a bit more affordable. But I would say if you are really heart set on going to an art school, um, definitely try to financially be as smart as you can. Like I was an RA for most of my time at CCAD. So I saved a lot of money doing that. Um, I got as much scholarships as I could. Uh, yeah, like <laughs> I think if you wanna go, I think you can make it work, but I think you will also be just as happy and successful 
putting in your best effort at any other kind of school that you go to. Great. It looks like Jenna also asked, uh, how do you plan your compositions? Uh, I have mentioned this before, but I really like this like minimalist maximalist combination. Um, so I tend to have, as I mentioned, like two sketchbooks. So this is my like crappy sketchbook. Um, as I say, like I have little thumbnail sketches where I'm just kind of playing like with shapes. Um, these are for uh, the series of like playlist covers I do with my friend where like she curates a playlist and I make a cover for it on Spotify. Um, yeah, so I, I try to be loose in a sketchbook and just like play around, figure out what I wanna do, try a bunch of different stuff. Um, I like to work small, that way I'm not getting hung up on the details as much. I'm just thinking about those like the big shapes first and then how the little shapes in the composition can support that. Uh, so for the project, the thing I'm doodling right now, and these are also from work, um, what I'm doodling right now, <laughs> look at that there, there we go. Uh, yeah, I, was, I, I knew I wanted to keep it simple. I was like, ah, I'm just gonna have a figure of me and little things that way I, I don't wanna get too hung up on uh, overthinking it, which is something I'm prone to do. So drawing small in a little sketchbook. And then, uh, again, I try to give myself flexibility though. So I kind of had my tiny thumbnail where I was like, all right, I know I want the figure. I know I want it. I want to take up majority of the composition. Um, meanwhile, the rest of the stuff, like the stars, I'm going to be drawing here. We're kind of just like, okay, I have these basic shapes. How can I fill, how could I just like fill this more without it being like, much, much distract, too distracting, much more distracting. Um, so I really like those star shapes. So that's kind of what I went for. This is uh, kind of tying in there, but um, Somali also asked, uh, what inspires your subject matter typically? Being outside, as I mentioned, like I live right by this really beautiful nature preserve. So I really uh, enjoy spending time outside and getting inspiration from there. Um, I like to process a lot of my emotions in my sketchbook. So um, when I'm going through, like this was a sketch I did after a breakup recently, and I was just like, Ugh, like I had to get that out. Um, another one where I like, I just get inspired by like what I'm going through, uh, just trying to get that on paper. Uh, this is another like sketchbook, bad thoughts don't make me bad. Uh, my in my tihi era um i've been doing yoga so this was just a sketch of like i could finally i could do a headstand i was very proud um so i wanted to draw myself doing a headstand um really like doing like i love clowns and i love like weird clown art so i was like i'm gonna paint a little clown guy that'll be fun um a little self another self-portrait that i did uh I have a lot of anxiety. So this was like a way of, I don't know, like me showing anxiety, like me portraying my anxiety. Um, more like self-portrait with flowers. Um, flowers, love flowers, bright colors, kind of again, clown vibes. Um, yeah, I love the colors. And um, personally, I was gonna ask, uh, do you typically find like a palette that you like first, or does it kind of come to you? Because I notice sometimes you use a lot of different greens or blues, or is it just kind of whatever feels right in the moment for you? Um, it depends. Like, so for what I'm doing now, I, I don't mix colors with my post markers. So I have, I have like what I, what I have available to me. So right now my favorite palette with post markers has been the one I'm using now, which is like the dark pink and the light pink. Uh, this green I found that I'm obsessed with, it's called apple green. And there are, there are a couple of different green postcard markers, but this has been my favorite one. Um, and then this like classic light blue. This has been like my favorite palette lately. Um, the only problem with it, as you can kind of see, is like this green, the, the apple green and the blue are like really similar in terms of uh, value. So I, I do get nervous when I have, uh, when those are like right next to each other. Uh, 
So I think like if I if I had a more if I had literally if I could afford to have every single Posca marker at every single color at every single size, I would. Um, unfortunately, I don't. So I do try to like be scrappy with what I have. Um, but yeah, I love green. Green's my favorite color. I do use a lot of green. Um, I really like monochromatic color schemes as well. When I do digital work, sometimes I'll like play around with like a monochromatic color scheme. Uh, there's sometimes I'll just like go through artists that I like, just pick a piece that I think like <laughs> has good colors and I'll just color drop uh, from those pieces. It gets uh, just to get, and then I'll like move them around a little bit, play with, play with the saturation, play with the values. Um, until I get something I like. But I do try to like complementary as well. Like I really like how the green and the pink really pop next to each other in this composition. Yeah, and if anyone else in the chat has some more questions for Kaylee, please uh, type them out and we'll ask them. Let's see, how important would you consider color theory in your art versus going with the flow? Uh, <laughs> I'm sweating. Uh, I, it, it can, it can be important. Like I think, uh, in terms of color theory, like, like I mentioned before, something I'm seeing as a flaw here is like the values between the green and the blue aren't really like working for me. What I'm probably going to do is like go in with some white to really make the shoes pop more, um, add some like details in white. Um, so I try to keep that in mind, but also, I don't know, as, as I've, kind of like segued from like I have a nine to five in design where I try to like make sure contrast is really important especially since everything's living digitally trying to make sure there's contrast trying to make sure all the text is legible is like really important when you're doing like commercial illustration or commercial design whereas like playing around on my sketchbook I kind of enjoy playing with um illegible illegibility sometimes like uh it can be it can be fun to just like push push that um but that said like accessibility in commercial art and like whatever you're doing um should be the priority accessibility should be the priority priority in that way um so yeah it's like a combination of going with the flow but i do try to map things out in in my sketchbook as soon as i can uh like i like, for instance, I don't really like, or I knew I wanted this stuff to be pink. And I was like, okay, well, if that's pink, the hair should be pink. And I don't want, like, I just like thinking about it like that, where I was like, oh, okay, if the hair's pink, the shirt can't be pink because I want it to be like pink, green, pink, green. So I'm thinking about things like that um, as I'm laying everything out. Um, but I don't like do little color studies necessarily for uh, my personal work, unless it's gonna be at a much larger scale or if it's a digital illustration. Yeah, we also uh, have another question. I've noticed that you use a wide range of patterns in your artwork. What would you say is your favorite pattern to draw at the moment? Ah, oh, man. I like flower patterns and I like these like starburst shapes. Um, those are probably some of my favorite. I also like leaf shapes. Um, really love organic, like organic floral and leafy shapes are some of my favorites to, to play around with right now. I'm trying to see if I have any examples. I'm so a big fan of polka dots, like I do try like in in some of my compositions I like I don't know I just have like in basic shapes and I'm just like I'm gonna fill that with like a pattern so I, I use a lot of polka dots use a lot of uh squiggle lines like I love this like squiggle line just to like add texture uh yeah but in, yeah polka dots I love polka, love a polka dot love a stripe love like little star shapes but like that are a little messed up that aren't like perfect star shapes and I like flowers also, you had earlier mentioned a friend Judy uh, and their artwork. Do you have their last name? Was it Ju Ju or no, Julie? Sorry, Julie or Ju. I'm not sure if I say, oh, Ju Hee Yoon. Yeah. Um, yes, um, I might be able to drop it in the chat. That would be wonderful. We have a couple of folks asking. I'm a huge fan of her work. I have like this big poster um, in my office. 
Let's see, do I have access to the chat? Yeah, she, I, oh my God. Like I, she has done a few kids books. She's done a lot of like poster art, um, a lot of editorial work. Um, definitely recommend looking up her stuff. Yeah. And another question, do you find it difficult to make time for your personal artwork while also having to work full time as a designer? And do you have yeah. any advice for dealing with that? Yes, absolutely. It's really hard. <laughs> um, and it's, it's like fluctuated on how hard it's been. Like I've had jobs where uh, I've been, I've had design jobs where a lot of the time it's just like plug in, plugging something in and just, I can turn my mind off and just like create a banner ad. Um, and it's really easy. Um, whereas like work I do for her campus is really creatively fulfilling, but part of the, the like take of that is like, I have to put in a lot of creative effort <laughs> in the nine to five. So that kind of leaves me drained at the end of the day. Um, so I've, I've kind of been in a phase where I've just been like kind of taking it easy. I did a lot of freelance last year on top of my full-time job and I just got really, really burned out. Um, so I've been saying no to a lot of things lately. Lately, I've been actually saying, saying yes to some stuff that I'm excited about, but um, I think just like taking it easy on yourself. I know when I got right out of school, I felt so guilty about like not having super high creative output all the time. And I would just say, be careful not to bring yourself out. I think like having a sketchbook like this, um, that's just for like rough doodles, rough thoughts. Sometimes this is literally all I'll draw in a day and a past version of me would have been like, man, I just drew a shitty character sketch and that's it. And, but now I'm like, yeah, at least I drew today. Like, that's nice. Um, so I've, I've been trying to take it a little easy and just like break things down into like what brings me joy right now. And lately that's been really colorful compositions in my sketchbook and just like jotting down like journal thoughts with little sketches in my sketchbook. Um, I also recommend if you do want to really like, I, I'm a huge fan of this service called, um, shoot, what's the, name? what's the name of it? Notion. And I will also drop a link to that. Um, Notion is an app that helps you like stay organized. It's kind of like a digital notebook. I also keep a, a notebook that I uh, just like journal and like keep a bunch of stuff in. Um, but yes, I'm, I'm trying to like Google it. There's always ads. Copy link address. Yeah, I love using Notion to organize some of my larger scale projects. Like I'm, I would really like to, I used to do a lot of comics when I was in college and I really haven't put together a zine um, since then. So that's kind of on my like, this year I would like to put together a zine of like some of my illustrations for my sketchbook as well as some of the mini comics that I've made over the last few years. And I really want to put together like a zine and like show up at a place like Space or uh, Comics Crossroads Columbus and just be able to hand it out and just be like, I'm back. <laughs> I've made things again. Um, and Notion has been really helpful for organizing that, has a calendar, you can make task lists. Like love Notion if you need a little extra help organizing your, your thoughts and your ideas and that kind of thing. Wonderful, I think I might be able to take advantage of that too. And it can be on your phone, like in it'll sync, it'll be on your phone and on your like desktop, like, I love it. <laughs> so um, how would you think or say that art helps you in other areas of your life, not just as a career? Oh man, I, it's been so helpful and exploring my identity as like a queer person, as a non-binary person. It's like to the point where I'll look through sketchbooks from when I was in college and I'm like, shit, dude, you were like going through it and you didn't really realize it, but like you were definitely non-binary. <laughs> like you just like were so in denial about it, but it's like right here in the sketchbook. Um, so using sketch sketchbooks as like <laughs> a form of journaling or uh, this like self-expression can, can really be insightful. Like I remember I made, I made this whole comic in like 2014 about like my complicated, I like 
gender journey and then I'd like made this comic and then I like never talked about it and then like didn't come out as non-binary for another like six years so uh I think having art as a form of expression and like journaling and like introspection is really really helpful um I have always been like I've been an introvert quiet kid for most of my life and I feel like art was where I felt like I could be seen and be the loudest and uh that's something that I'm really glad I found and like it's something that um I don't know it's like would I be here I know I'd be very like in a different place in my life if I didn't pursue um design and art in general but I think it like I don't even know if I'd be who I am without it you know Yeah, a whole lot of love in the chat for the uh, sketchbooks as journaling. I'm, I'm definitely going to have to try to maybe tap into that practice a little bit more my own self. Something I really recommend is like, I don't know if anybody else is like dis diseased by Twitter sometimes, but sometimes I'm like, you know, instead of making this a tweet, I can write it down and make it a comic down the line or something like that. Um, I just think there's like so much more productive and insightful ways to like do do like you have all these thoughts like do something with them and I feel like making little doodles little comics even I don't really share too much of that stuff on my Instagram or Twitter or anything I just kind of like having it in my little books <laughs> and then I can revisit it and I'm like oh okay I can like finish this or I can expand this idea into something a bit more ambitious or I can just like snap a little pic and Put that on my Instagram if I if I want. Now I have basically like all the main uh, shapes here compose. Um, so I'm going in. Um, I do like to save the background for last because I do tend to like drag my hand. So I really don't want to get um, the Posca markers everywhere and smeared, um, but it definitely happens all the time. One of the things that um, I found so empowering about visiting um, the Billy Ireland cartoon library, if you if you haven't been, if you live in Columbus and you and you have the opportunity to visit the Billy Ireland, I really recommend it because they have a ton of originals of Calvin of the Calvin and Hobbes strips. And when you look at them, you can see where the guy, Bill Watterson used whiteout and just would like totally redo things. And it's like, oh wow, the pros make, make mistakes and mess up and it's fine. And like, they can just fix it. Um, so I think that really helped me in my like perceived sense of perfection. Um, I used to, I was really primarily a digital artist for a really long time because I, felt the need for everything I made to be super polished and have no mistakes. And I just kept like, you make mistakes <laughs> when you work traditionally, it just is part of the process. Um, so I think being a bit more forgiving on myself for that has been really helpful and just seeing icons like Bill Watterson see that they make mistakes and just move forward anyway has also been really, really helpful. <laughs> Yeah, what about any local museums or areas uh, in Illinois that you like to go to? Uh, here in Peoria, I have I I actually have like I've I've been kind of struggling to like find little art museums that I've liked around here. I just honestly just haven't had the opportunity to go out and explore too much. Um, I do like like I like rock climbing. That's another been a big source of inspiration for me and. Uh, in some of my arts and my comics. So I, I spend a lot of my time in Peoria, like outside and in, in some of the nature trails here, um, in the climbing gym, climbing things. Uh, but Chicago, and there's some, obviously like the art museum in Chicago is like beautiful, stunning, definitely recommend going there. Um, yeah, we have a Peoria Art Guild and we have a little art fair that is like really cool. I, 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 I find some the kind of my like struggle as like an artist sometimes is like feeling like my stuff is almost too commercial to find acceptance in like the fine art community. Um, and I, I feel like the art community here is very that. Um, so that's been my kind of FOMO or, or no, my imposter syndrome in that regard is where I'm like, oh no, I don't do big 
cool paintings. I do weird little doodles. <laughs> um, Another question in the chat was uh, about Columbus artists. Uh, do you have any recommendation, recommendations around Columbus for artists from you? So artists in Columbus that I like or things to do in Columbus if you're an, arti if you're an artist or- Maybe both. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I mentioned uh, Chelsea Bunn and Emily Warren, who I both, I worked with uh, at my first job. Um, they're both I believe, that, I know Chelsea does freelance graphic design and illustration. I believe Emily does as well. I'm really inspired by their work. Um, man, there's like so many people I love in Columbus. Uh, 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 man, um, I feel like I would, I should look through my Instagram and drop some links in the chat. Um, but I, Instagram is like occupied doing that right there. Uh, Man, my mind's kind of going blank off the top of my head. Um, but uh, I would say if a lot of people I'd recommend probably tabled at Space or will be tabling at Comics Crossroads Columbus. So I will, I would recommend looking those two, and those are indie comic conventions, um, looking those up and just checking out the artists who are going to be tabling there because I, especially the ones that are local, uh, are all really incredible. Yeah, we are just about at the end of our time. Does anyone else have any last questions? Or Kaylee, do you have any last words of advice? Uh, keep a sketchbook and don't use Twitter. <laughs> you keep a sketchbook in a journal instead of being on Twitter. That's what I would recommend. <laughs> Good advice, yeah. Just like be true again and again, just like being true to yourself and remember when you're interviewing for creative roles that you're also interviewing them. So like making sure that you're putting your, your most authentic self forward so you know it's gonna be a good fit. Um, that's what I'd recommend. Well, yes, thank you so much for uh, spending time with us today and drawing it looks awesome <laughs> it's not finished i will also finish it and i'll include that in the, in the email <laughs> well yeah we uh we really enjoyed having you today so thank you so much uh as uh being a part of our dei speaker series Yay. and um yeah well uh for the folks that uh participated today we'll, you'll be getting a survey so look out for that in your email and again thank you so much for your art your time and your words so really appreciate it. Oh uh, man, I miss Columbus so much. I am so grateful y'all had me. So thank oh, yeah. you. Next time you're in town, hit me up. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, well, thanks everyone. Thank you again. Bye.